is part 155 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss binding ASP.NET menu control to an XML file using XML data source control. This is continuation to part 154, so please watch part 154 from the ASP.NET tutorial before proceeding. At the moment, data for this menu control is hard-coded within the menu control itself, as you can see here. The disadvantage of hard coding menu items within menu control like this is that later if we have to add or remove menu items then we will have to change the application code. Changing application code means we will have to rebuild and redeploy our application to all the production servers. In this video we'll discuss storing menu items in an XML file and then binding that XML file to the menu control. The advantage that we get is that later if we have to add or remove items from the menu, we don't have to change the application code. Simply change the uh, XML file and the application is going to automatically pick up those changes. So we don't have to rebuild and redeploy our application. So let's see how to bind an XML file to the menu control. The first step here is to get rid of these hard-coded menu items. So at the moment we don't have any menu items hard-coded within the menu control. The next step is to add an XML file. So let's add a new item. Let's call this menuitems.xml. You can give it any meaningful name you want. Now we need to include our menu items here. To speed things up I have already implemented the required XML. So let's copy and paste that XML right here. And this XML is straightforward. Notice that we have a root element called items. You can give this root element any name you want. And within this root element, we have got menu items, menu elements. And again, you can give this element any name that you want. Along the same lines, the attributes also can have any name. Basically, what this XML element means here is that when we click home menu item, we want the user to go to home.aspx page okay and uh, here we have employee menu item so when we click this we want the user to go to employee.aspx and if you recollect from the previous session under employee we have these three menu items so to achieve that you know within that xml element we have these three xml elements so basically under employee these three menu items will be displayed. Along the same lines, under employer, these three menu items, and under admin, these three menu items. So straightforward XML. The next step is to include an XML data source control on the master page. So this XML data source control is going to read the XML data from the XML file. So let's drag and drop the XML data source control onto our master page. So XML data source control is present under data tab within toolbox. Now we need to tell this XML data source control the path for the file that contains our XML data. And to do that, we are going to use data file attribute. And where is the menu um, XML file present? In the root directory of our project. And to indicate the root directory, we use tilde character, so tilde forward slash. And what is the name of the file? Menu items dot XML. So let's copy the name of the file and paste it here. So at this point, XML data source control knows where to read data from. Okay, so we are done with the first two steps. We added an XML file, specified our menu items, and second, we added an XML data source control and associated this XML data source control with this XML file using data file attribute. Here, if you notice, we are also using XPath attribute. We'll discuss that in just a bit. Now, the final step is basically associate this XML data source control with the menu control. And how do we do that? Using data source ID attribute. So. We have the menu control here, so we need to associate this with the XML data source control using data source ID attribute. And what is the ID of the XML data source control? XML data source 1. So now everything is linked up. 
So we have the menu data within the XML file. XML data source control knows how to read the data. And then we have associated that XML data source control with the menu control. So the menu control has the menu data right now. But then one more thing that we need to specify is that, so what is the data member that contains menu data? So if you look at our XML file, so what's the data member that we have specified here? Menu item. So menu item element within the XML file has got menu data. Okay, and this XML element can contain any number of attributes, but then we want a text to be displayed on the menu. And then once we click the link, we want the user to go to this page, you know, maybe home.aspx when we click on home link. So which element of which attribute in the XML element contains you know text and navigate URL so text field is pointing to text attribute and navigate URL field is pointing to navigate URL attribute so let's specify data bindings within the menu control data bindings ASP menu data binding. The first thing is data member. So what's the data member? Menu item. So this XML element and text field is text. That's the name of the attribute within the XML and navigate URL field. So navigate URL field is navigate URL attribute. Let's copy the name of the attribute, paste it there. All right, we're done. So let's run this and see if we get the output that we expect. Look at that. Now we expected home, employee, employer, and admin to be displayed. But look at this, it's actually displaying items. And what is this items? This is nothing but the root element within the XML file. We don't want the menu to start from this root. We want it to start from, you know, menu item. Okay. And to tell that to the menu control, what we need to do is basically we need to specify X path. Okay. So basically read menu item within the items root element. That's what this X path is for. Okay. So let's go ahead and specify the X path within the XML data source control. So within items root element, look for menu item. All right, with this change, let's run this one more time and see if we get the output that we expect. Look at that, we get the output as expected. All right, now let's actually specify selected styles for the menu control. We discussed you know, selected style in the previous session. Um, let's specify selected style and see if that style get applied. Look at this at the moment, level menu styles are applied. We discussed these in our previous session. So the first level we want in yellow color and that we get. The second level we want in red color and we get that as well. We don't have a third level, so we can get rid of this if we want to. Now, let's specify level selected styles. Let's say for the first level when we select an item, we want black background color to be applied. Similarly, for the second level also, we want black color. All right, with these changes, let's run this once more and check if the selected styles are applied. Look at that, we are on the home page, but home is not selected. Let's click on employee. Is employee menu item selected? No, it's not. So basically, the selected style that we have specified, you know, it's not working. And to make it work within the code behind file of the master page, if you remember, you know, we discussed this code in the previous session of this video series. So basically, we need to move this code to the pre-render event of the menu control. So first, we need to generate the pre-render event handler for the menu control. So this is our menu control. Uh, press F4 to get to the properties and click on this lightning bolt symbol and there we have pre-render event. Double click that so there is an event handler uh, for the pre-render event. So what I'm going to do here is move this for each loop from page load 
to pre-render event handler. All right, so let's run this and see if selected styles get applied. Look at that, we are on the home page and home is already selected. Let's select edit resume. So edit resume page and look at that, that's it selected. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.